I'm back. I got cut off by Facebook there. Boy, I tell you one thing: if the shell or any of those at church ever figure out how to cut me off on Sunday morning, I'm a hurt. All right. All right. Let me get back. Finish up what we were doing there. Uh, I think I left off with uh, us being in Linville Caverns, and the two boys was there with us. And anyways, get back to that. Explain verse 27 to you. They should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him. All right. Now, what happens is the lady at Linville Caverns will say, I'm going to cut the lights off. It's going to be very dark in here. So if you're afraid, you need to grab a hold of somebody. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, Landon, he's sitting on my shoulders. Austin's standing there and Tina grabs a hold of Austin and, and we're ready. Lights go off. Pitch black dark. I mean, you literally cannot see your hand in front of your face. Landon grabs a hold of my neck and a hold of my collar, and I mean, he's got a grip. Austin's grabbing a hold of his mom. I can hear his mom over there say, Austin, not so hard. He's squeezing her, okay? And, and that's what the Bible, that's what it means by that. It means groping in the dark, and that's what's taking place. See, Paul's saying that, you know, people are feeling after him, and they're looking for something or someone that can give them hope that can give them faith, that can give them love, something to believe in. You know, I, I go back to that, and I think about my two sons. If if they had not been, if I hadn't had land on my shoulders or, or Tina hadn't had a hold of Austin, you know, those two boys, the minute those lights went off, they would have, you know, done this. Where's mom? Where's dad? And that's what's being implied there. He says, happily, if he seek the Lord, if happily they might feel after him. Okay? So we're all living in a dark place, feeling after, trying to find the Lord, hoping to, to touch the Lord. And look what the Bible says after that. He says, and bind him, though he be not far from every one of us. In other words, <clears throat> go back to my illustration. This is what Paul is trying to illustrate with these Athenians. If my son was standing right here beside me, and those lights went off. He knows the last place where I was standing. So guess what he's going to do? He's going to do. He's going to reach for Dad. Okay, I know where Dad's at. I'm going to reach for him. And that's what the Bible is trying to illustrate there in worship. Because when we grab a hold of the Lord, really reach His heart by expressing to Him what is on our heart. That's when real worship begins to take place. I go back to my illustration with Sister Radford. What was on her heart was a desire to see the Lord. I want to see Him face to face. And her heart began to sing the things of God that she had held on to, that she had found when she felt and groped in the dark. And it touched my heart. And that is what real worship is. You know, I go back to what Jesus said when he laid that child there in the middle of all these disciples. Unless you become like one of these, you'll not see the kingdom of heaven. And I think about little White. We have here in our church. White's about four years old. I believe he's going to be a preacher one day. And old White, he'll come in there in them back doors. And Margie will be trying to keep up with him. And she's got the younger, his younger brother, I think, Hunter, in her hand. And she's trying to keep up with him. Now Hunter's starting to take off. And, and she's coming up through there. And you tell Margie's about to work out, bless her heart. He's like, well, these boys will keep you on your toes. But he'll hit that door. He's excited. Hey, preacher, how you doing? Got to get to class. He's excited to be there. He's happy. The yeah, psalmist David said, I was happy when it's time to go to the house of the Lord. He's happy to be worshiping. I get to grab on to the Lord and hang on to him. And that's where real worship is found. At the feet of Jesus as the Bible teaches us. That's where it's at. And here's the thing. The Bible says he's not far from you. You know, it's not constrained to the church. It's not constrained or, or just in the works that you do with your hands. You can worship the Lord at any time. All he needs is a willing heart. That's what he needs. What we know there. Now we're groping in the dark trying to find God. What we fail to realize, God has already found us. Revelation 3.20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. What's he talking about? The door of the heart. We feel with our hearts, therefore it is the source of our emotions, our feelings of hope, our feelings of trust, our feelings of belief, our feelings of love. 
With a heart man believed unto righteousness, with a mouth confession is made. God is never far from us. What's real worship? Real worship is found. Grab a hold of the Lord. That's where it's found. As close to Him as you can be. Have a relationship, not a ritual. I always think about Brother Mays Jackson. I remember attending the tent revival in downtown Elizabeth, and Brother Mays Jackson had just got done and preaching, and everybody was getting ready to dismiss and leave. There's about a couple thousand people there, if I recall. There's a lot. The whole tent was packed, and you know everybody had left, and, and Brother Mays Jackson walked up to his car, and he went to the pastor's side. He's by himself. He went to the pastor's side and said, Lord, get in. And he shut the door. Then he went to the driver's side and got in and drove off. And I thought to myself, if we could be as close to the Lord as Brother Mays is, we can accomplish some things. And I mean that in a very respectful way. He understood the Lord is always with him. And that's what we've got to understand. Even at a time like this, we've got to understand God is always with us. You can worship at any time. And I hope today you will. God bless you for joining us this morning. Sorry about the, the break in, in the service there. And I've learned something. So, you know, understand this is my first go at it too. So now I understand I do have a time limit. <laughs> oh my goodness, boy, they ever figured that out here at the church. I'm a hurt. But uh, do, do join us back this evening at 5.30. Uh, we're going to continue on our study of the book of Colossians, and uh, that will be at 5.30 today. Okay, God bless you for joining us today, and you be careful out there. Enjoy your family. You know, enjoy your family. Enjoy time together, and uh, we'll see you back at 5.30. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you as always for what you do for us. Thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your grace, your mercy. Lord, as always, we're eternally thankful for your love. For it is the love that sent Jesus Christ down to the cross to die for us. Father, I pray now that you be with us through the first of this day. Father, I hope that we have accomplished some things. As always, we want to bring honor and glory to you because you are the source of real worship. It all revolves around you. And help us to grab a hold of it, not just at a time like this, but at all times of our lives. Father, we thank you so much for what you do for us, for your goodness, your kindness, your grace, and your mercy. Lord, thank you so much for Jesus Christ. Well, I pray, continue to pray for those that are having to deal with this uh, coronavirus and our, our medical professions. And well, I pray, continue to be with our leaders. Or as always, we'll praise you for all you do. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You enjoy your day. We'll see you at 530. <laughs>